Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional information online. This video is from SugarMD. I've reviewed some content from SugarMD before, and basically they're pushing sugar. So this will be interesting. The always consider the source. When the, the name of this is when protein spikes insulin, not glucose, more than a carb. A new study. Well, this is pretty interesting because it goes against what I've been taught. I've been taught that carbohydrates raise the blood sugar and the insulin. I have been emphasizing the unexpected impact of combining protein and fat on insulin levels for some people, despite the prevailing belief that the carbs are the primary concern for everybody. Well, how do I know that? I listen to my patients. I hear their lives. Everybody's different. Many of you doubted my assertion that, they, oh, keto, you know, is great. It's gonna work for everyone. Well, some people come and tell me that it's not. It actually makes things worse. If someone learns from the internet how to do a keto diet, and they go to a doctor who's not necessarily supportive of a keto diet, like, oh, most doctors in my area, that you might say, though, it was so hard. It's, you know, I couldn't get over it, not having bread or pasta or rice, or, or I may have had keto flu or keto adaptation, we call it, because the fatigue and, and headache the first few days or maybe week, actually it can be mitigated by having salt replacement if you learn from someone reputable about how to do a keto diet. But yeah, I suppose it, people come in and say it's not for me, even to my office. But in my experience, with the right coaching, the counseling, contextualization, helping with, with substitutions, most people actually do really well on a keto diet, including blood glucose regulation. And here, this doctor is trying to say that metabolically there's something wrong if someone comes in and saying, I can't do the keto diet. Well, I always ask, who taught you? Where did you learn how to do it? And a simple version means it's going to be more sustainable. Well, this study proves my claim. The study does not prove his claim. <laughs> Actually, I, let me just fast forward. What the study shows is they took cadaver cells, they took dead people, pancreas, and looked at the islet cells, which produce the insulin. So we're not even talking about an intact human in this radical study that he's talking about. So they took these islet cells, put it in a, in a Petri dish or outside, it's called it in vitro, and, and gave it certain compounds, different types of nutritional elements in the same bath as these islet cells and found what the insulin production was based on the different nutrients outside the body in dead people. Well, let me know what your blood sugar does in live, in your you know, as you're alive. And I have never had anyone come to me saying that their blood sugar goes up more after eating protein and fat than eating carbohydrates. I've never had that. Of course, the blood glucose may not go up much because the insulin goes up to keep it down. And while that's thought to be, you know, normal, it's not optimal. And the reason for that is Elevated insulin is also harmful and pro-inflammatory. So if you're having to have really high insulin levels to keep the glucose down, this is not a win. Even though your continuous glucose monitor might show that your blood sugar, blood glucose, didn't change much after eating carbohydrates. So you always want to know what the insulin level has done, but it's hard to measure insulin. There is no continuous insulin monitor. So I had to just bring in that the, the whole study is actually not in intact humans. It's in cadaver or dead people's cells. 